Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Tomlins from Coventry University, and I'm going to share screen and take you for, through even a little um, a little presentation on the concept of social value and how to measure it and manage it and to drive it. And I think this is really crucial for your work over the next couple of days in terms of identifying what's important and amplifying that. Here we have the, the very beautiful night lighted skyline of Coventry. So here we go, let me just find my controls. So three aims for this session, to flag the importance of measuring the things that really matter. And then secondly, to provide you with no view of the concept of social value. And then thirdly, to encourage you to reflect on social value creation. So to take you on a bit of a journey where you're thinking about the way in which you can measure things that might be not immediately tangible in terms of measurement, but that you go beyond measurement and you actually think of value creation as well. And this might be the easiest starting point for some of you. This is the triple bottom line. It's quite widely known about. It um, is a phrase that was coined by Elkington, who becomes very critical of his own theory about 20 years later. And I'll, I'll come to that in a second. But we have the, the idea that as producers, as entrepreneurs, as business organisations, we shouldn't just be concerned with, in the curse of God, here it is, profit, but we should also be concerned with planet and people, and that we should be measuring the impact that we therefore have around sustainability. But I, I said measure there, didn't I? And Elkington is very critical 20 years on of the way in which his triple bottom line theory had ended up becoming an accountancy practice. Whereas he really saw it as a driver for change to encourage us to think about better and a different future, different and a better future even. So I've written on this, um, this feels a long while ago now, it's not that long ago, uh, about social value today. So uh, feel free to look that up. It's out there for free on the web. And but that's not really going to get you that excited, is it? I mean, I, I, I love my little publication, but I want to get you this excited about social value when you're doing this presentation in a big room and you've got the um, the slides being projected onto the screen behind you it feels like it feels like this is a picture that you can hear as well as see that you can walk into the crowd at this Beatles concert you can body meld into it so I'm going to give you another 60s reference and try and get you well maybe not quite that excited but at least to give you a feeling of the emotion within social value. This is Bobby Kennedy in 1968 at the University of Kansas launching his American presidential campaign. He was tragically assassinated like his brother. And we wonder where Bobby Kennedy would have taken that campaign. Um, but I think this is really powerful. He, he doesn't talk about social value, but he, he he frames it for me, and this is as eloquent as anything I've heard about social value, even without naming it, because he starts to talk about the way in which we measure our economic health. And at the time in 68, he says our gross national product now is over $800 billion a year. So gross national product, one of those standard measures if not the standard measure for economic health and he talks about the the things that contribute to those 800 billion dollars like air pollution and cigarette advertising and the ambulances to clear the highways of carnage the special locks for our doors jails for the people that break them he talks about the way in which that 800 billion dollars include the the napalm that the US was dropping at that time on Southeast Asia. There's uh, a horrific but very 
memorable photograph of a, a young girl running to, to the camera with her clothes burnt off her back and her, her skin burnt off her back as well. Um, with the effects of napalm, he talks about the way in which that $800 billion also includes nuclear warheads, armoured cars for the police to fight the riots in the cities of the US that were happening at that time. Some of you might have seen a film two or three years ago now called Detroit, which very much captures that. Yet it does not allow for the health of our children, the quality of their education or the joy of their play. That $800 billion simply doesn't measure that. It does not include the beauty of our poetry or the strength of our marriages. It measures neither our wit nor our courage, neither our wisdom nor our learning, neither our compassion nor our devotion. It measures everything in short except that which makes life worthwhile. So in your endeavours over these few days, I'm going to encourage you to measure social value, but also to go beyond that, as Elkington would like us to do, to, to drive social value, to drive those people and planet parts of the triple bottom line. And for a growing number, maybe even the majority now of economic experts, people like the former Bank of England governors, governor even. Um, if you ignore the climate crisis, you have no future. You have no future as a business. And we start seeing a, a series of, it's almost like tumbling dominoes where banks and investors start to move away from some of the the toxic investment practices that they're known for, this greater recognition of sustainability and sustainable development goals. So big, big trend, particularly in the US, but it's global around ESG investors, environmental, social and governance investors. And to, I think that's useful to tap into over your three days to talk about the, the traction that this movement towards greater focus on the environment and social issues has. And that works its way through to measurement as well. So all sorts of different initiatives now to, to capture the impact that organisations make, that we as collect of individuals mate so the Dow Jones Sustainability North America Index for, for one and in this context if you're interested in business I want you to think about social value very much as a successor to corporate social responsibility at its worst corporate social responsibility very much a, an organization and a business fig leaf where you both the good that you're doing maybe in terms of a community project, but you don't present a, a holistic picture of your overall environmental and social impact. So as a definition, social value does include economic stuff. Quite often I have this challenge with colleagues who are conducting economic impact assessments and see social return on investment analyses looking at social value as something other. A social value measure should include economic, social and environmental. It's very much a holistic view of an organisation or a societal footprint. And this definition, I, I don't really like the definition in many ways because it's getting a bit old now and it's a UK one. And nevertheless, it does cover these these three big chunks of social, economic, environmental. And certainly in the UK, and you should think about this in terms of your own country concept, government now pushes us to reflect on the importance of non-market goods. So uh, the things that you can't buy in a corner shop, like happiness, like resilience, uh, are all now standard requirements to be assessed as part of project appraisal and again in the UK this is an English app but generally in the UK um, we have different ways in which government is encouraged in this case forced to take into account the social value that organisations produce 
in terms of making its procurement decisions, so deciding which firm will be appointed to deliver healthcare, for example, or maybe security services. So again, think in your own country context about whether equivalence, and the, the idea of social value is very much to put you in this sort of position where, I love this one, this one asleep on the floor with his head in the hand, sand even, but um, taking into account social value as a business organisation should enable you to have this comprehensive view of business environment, societal impact, and is one of the, the other sets of slides. We, we've uploaded something that we developed um, five years ago now in Mexico, which is around a, a brewery seeking to establish a new premises in Mexico and deciding whether to source the water and the crops in different places. The water ends up being sourced in Mexico, but are they to grow or to import the, uh, the barley? And the decision making as you go through those different rounds, I hope you have a chance to have a look at it as part of this, this course. If not, contact me and I'll send it to you direct. It's very much trying to give you this wide ranging perspective. I love this one, taking a different perspective back. So we're moving into a global environment where things that I guess were fringe in a way like social value are now mainstream so one of the big international accountancy consultancies pwc noting that all credit rating agencies now factor non-financial elements into their models for assessing business performance and there is an established procedure for carrying out social value measurements um, the gold standard is to carry out a social return on investment analysis and very much the trajectory of social return on investment analysis and social value measurement is to, is to follow the pathway that traditional profit and loss accounting has followed to establish principles, to move to a framework, and then to move to accounting standards. We're, we're broadly in this principles place at the moment for social value. But um, one of the things that, took me about when I when I wrote that book that I mentioned earlier is I, I kind of thought that accountancy principles have been laid down since I don't know um, the 1500s or something like that and yet it was not until the mid 1900s you actually get the codification of accounting principles quite interesting to to read the way in which the um, different accounting practices enabled the Wall Street crash to happen in 1929. So again, this eye opener in terms of how recent some of the formal profit and loss accounting practices have come to be uh, codified. And I mentioned this to you because sometimes people will say that things like happiness can't be measured, that um, social value measurement is in its infancy. Well, it's relatively new. However, um, let's not assume that profit and loss accounting has a huge timeline to it. Certainly in a formal sense. So we're at the principal stage of measuring social value and that's key to being able to compare different values. So you have a consistency of principles, you know that the person undertaking the analysis is broadly measuring the same things in the same way and as a result, you get a consistent and a credible account for the value that's being created or destroyed for that matter. And again, in terms of a social return on investment analysis, you're looking at the way the holistic footprint, what happens for good, but also what happens for bad. So if we have a principles based approach, it begs the question of what those principles are. And Sometimes I draw this as a circular diagram. So to involve stakeholders, this is what got me involved in social return investment analysis and passionate about it. It's the idea that you talk to people. So very much different to cost benefit analyses and considerations of opportunity cost, where 
you can do a desktop review for uh, SROI, Social Return and Investment Analysis. You have to talk to stakeholders and understand from them what changes and what really matters to them and what's made a difference to them. So they only include what is material part and not to overclaim. So to be careful about not overvaluing your impact, but to be transparent in terms of the accounting of the difference that that organisation or person has made. And the loop gets completed with the verifying of the result, which should take us back to consulting stakeholders again. So this is if you there's all sorts of uh, software tools out there to allow you to do social return and investment analyses. I'm not a great fan of them. I still tend to do them uh, longhand on an Excel spreadsheet where you move from left to right from what the stakeholders think, what they hope will happen, or if it's a reflection, what they thought would happen to think about the inputs that the funding, for example, that went in, the time that went in, the outputs in terms of the, the number of things that change, but very much a focus on outcomes, what changes, and then this side of the diagram, really a, an accountancy um, that reflects what you did and how long lasting that would be and not overclaiming. So, um, when you look at the slides, I've stretched this rather, haven't I? Um, this is uh, this is a made-up example. So this is one that you can have a look at and get a feel for what a social return investment analysis looks like, and you can get a feel for the social value that's produced. And one of the traditional ways of doing a social return investment analysis has been to identify the outcome that, that changes. I feel more confident, for example. And then to put a financial proxy against it, this is probably the biggest of all the sites, but um, these sites which are incredibly useful also have flaws. So you'll, you'll go into that site if you're looking for something as I was in Sheffield about the uh, benefit of living in a safe neighbourhood, you'll be able to pick up one value from one study that says living in a safe neighbourhood is worth £650 and not exactly the same. I'm not sure it's that different that um, to get increased resilience, you value that £26,600, pardon. So um, those data sets that you can access through let's go back whoops these sites will give you some indicators of value that's produced and give you some numbers but increasingly if i'm doing a social return investment analysis then i do something like a, a value game where you talk with the community about what a particular thing like being happier more confident, being more resilient, feeling safer, etc. What that means to them, and you basically play uh, a game, a uh, card game. You get them to draw things that they'd like to buy, um, and you get them to substitute uh, that increased happiness, that increased confidence in a in a bet in a deck of ranked cards. It's a little bit more complex than that, but hopefully you'll get the the feel of it in that way. So that's the measurement piece, isn't it? But I, I wanted to leave you by getting you to think about social value as a currency, a story of how change is being created, a narrative of change, a means of change, a dynamic of empowerment, so that we as citizens should expect that any service that is provided to us should be excellent quality, but should also generate social value that it should have an impact, that it should involve, I don't know, um, employing apprenticeships, providing skills, uh, workplace opportunities. It should make me feel good. And if I'm doing a very rough and ready social value analysis, and you might want to think about this in terms of the solutions that you could come up with over these couple of days, I think about 
social value as having three components. Um, the cost that you save for someone else. So that's the first pillar, if you like. So I know that by um, doing something that, that Mrs. Smith is less likely to have to go to the doctor or maybe into hospital, if I can prove that, I know what value a hospital bed is and occupy, occupancy of that hospital bed is worth. And then secondly, the immediate additional value added. So a, a second pillar, which is very much focused typically around apprenticeships, jobs created that wouldn't otherwise have been created. That's the really important point. You can only claim social value for the additional thing that you do, the additional value that you create that no one else would. And then a third pillar in terms of the ripple effect. So um, by giving someone that job, I make them feel com more confident and then they're able to go on and do something else. So uh, it's like the, the pebble into the pond and looking how far the ripples go. But again, you have to be able to demonstrate that within these three days, I think you're making a plausible argument for that case. So um, our latest thinking sounds very grand. My latest thinking is to take social value beyond measurement to management. So you identify the social value that you produce, but you then seek to scale that to grow it and to think about social value as a verb that you do social value. It's not simply a measurement piece as part of your projects over these three days, you're looking to grow social value and to treat social value as an adjective as well, a driver of business transformation. Think about how much good through your initiatives that you can drive the people and the planet. So that's it. That was quite short and sweet. Uh, this is me. You can email me over these few days um, or even after these few days, to be honest. So um, thank you for listening, everyone. And the best of luck with your projects in Coventry. Take care, everyone. Cheers.